Today's daf is daf chaf, and we'll pick it up where we left off on the third line. Amalei Rav Nachman. Rav Nachman is going to argue against Rav Sheshes. And he's going to make a distinction between Hakhasha Sa'idim and Hazoma Sa'idim. Whereas Hazoma Sa'idim requires Bifnehem, you could only be Mazim, the Eidim, Imonu Ayisim, if they're present. In contrast, Hakhasha Sa'idim, when you contradict the Eidim and you say that, no, this Mice never happened, that doesn't require Lifnehem. And that's what Rab Nachman is going to derive from a Kalvachom. And he says the following It's impossible to maintain your position that we require a Khasha Bifneim. Ilu Avi Kaman, if the Adam that are being contradicted, Hamukhashim, would be in front of us, Umakhishin Luhu, and the second pair of Adam would come. And destroy and undermine and disqualify their agents by saying Anusim Ketanim Psuliyedus Haviak Chasha. Certainly, Bezdin would accept the testimony of the Makhishim, who testify that the Edom who signed on this star were Anusim, etc. Vlaavi Meshkachinim Bahu. And we we certainly would not accept, <clears throat> at least entirely. The Eide Ashtar, the Mukhashim, who say, no, we weren't Anusim, to Avile Edus Mukreshis. That would be a cert- a certainly a case of two Edim against two Edim. That's called Tre Utre. And in the case of Tre Utre, we'd have to put the Shtar on the back burners. Hashta, the Lesna, who now that the Edim are not there, do you have a command, do you have a Modi? Had they been here in our, in our presence, maybe they would admit, yes, we were Anusim. Is Mehemne, certainly we should believe the Edim who are signed on the Shtar, if they would have admitted, as the Makhishim claim that they were Nusim or Katanim when they wrote the Shtar. And even though their Hoda is not really relevant because we have a principle called Kevon Shehige Shuvan Chozu Magid. So therefore, once they sign the Shtar, they can't be Choser, Bo. But nevertheless, in a case where Edom HaMachichim, that which is written the Shtar, the Edom HaChasum al Shtar could be Choser Umagin. But the whole reason why Edom that are signed on the Shtar are not able to be Choser Umagin is because of Nasa Commission Echra Edusim Bebezdin. But now there are Edom HaMachichim the Shtar, Anusim Ayinu, etc., now we have to be Choker Vidorish, the Adam that signed on the Shtar. And therefore it's not Nechkarai Dusa Bebezdin, and they could be Choser Umagin. So just to summarize the Kalvachom and the logic of Rav Nachman, how could you tell me that we cannot accept the Adam Amachishim, but rather we will validate the Shtar, when if the Adam Amukhosh were here in front of us alive and well, possibly they would be Moda. And they would admit that they were a Nusa when they signed the Shtar. And even in the worst case scenario, if they would deny it, it would be trade, trade two against two. How can you validate the Shtar? El Omar Av Nachman, Uki Trey, Lahari Trey. We're going to have to put two Adim against two Adim. We have the two Adim Amachichim. And we have the two Adim who are signed on the Shtar. The Machichim say that the two Adim signed on the Shtar were a Nusa. They signed the under duress. We have Trey, Trey. This is called Edus Mukreshes. And what do we do in a case of Trey Utre? Uki Momona Becheskes Mare. We have to leave the money in the Chazok in the possession of he who possesses it. For example, in the case of the Malva and the Lova, the Lova possesses the money. In the case of a Mocher and a Lokeach, then the Mocher is called the, the Mokzok. And we're going to apply the principle of Hamokti Mechavel. If all right, you want to take the money out of the hands of the Mokzok, then the burden of proof is on you. So that now in the Edus Hamachishim case, the Edus Hamachishim set up a tray tray, and we're going to have to put the star, so to speak, into deep freeze and go back to the Cheskes Marakama, the situation of the ownership of the Bailam as it was before the star came into Bezden. So the Brysa doesn't mean the way Rabbi Shesh understood the Brysa, that we don't believe them at all. 
We don't believe them to passel the star completely. Now, why is it relevant when you say that the star is not able to function in order to allow the lokeach or the malva to collect, but yet the star is still, so to speak, in, in deep freeze? And the answer is uh, tfisa. This is the concept which Rashi indicates here that what would be if the malva grabbed onto the money of the lova or the lokeach grabbed onto the field of the mocha? And once again, in a trade trade situation, we're going to say, leave well enough alone. And wherever the mamun is in any chazaka, that's what we're going to, uh, that's what we're going to uh, accept. So that the star is still somewhat of a valid star, but certainly uh, the star is not a tool in the hands of the malva or in the hands of the lokeach to use that star to prove and establish his claim and be motzi kasa. And now Rav Nachman wants to bring a proof. We'll see later that Rav Kiveger doesn't understand why Rav Nachman feels compelled to bring a proof. But in any event, let's see the proof of Rav Nachman. Midi the Havia Nixay Barshatya, the Barshatya. So let's talk about Barshatya for a minute. Barshatya was a person who vacillated between a state of Piklus and a state of Chtut. Sometimes he was a Shota and his actions are invalid. Sometimes he's a Pikeach. He gets, you know, he shakes himself out of that state of, of Shtus and his actions are valid. And the Barshatya, Zavin Nixe. He sold a piece of karka and he wrote a star. The star was given over to the Lokeach. And now Barshati is claiming that the sale is invalid. He wants his karka returned to him because at the time of the sale, he was a shota. The Lokeach, the buyer, he claims no, that at the time of the sale, Barshati was a Bikeach and therefore the sale is valid. Also, betray. The Amri Shu Shotas of him. We also betray the Amri Shu Cholims of him. There were two Ketos of Edim. One pair of Edim testified that Barshati was a Shota and the valid, it's invalid. And the other pair of Edim testified, no, that he was a Bikach at the time of the Mechira. And therefore the Mechach is Chal. Omar Avashi, Uki Tre, Labahadi Tre, we put two against two. We cannot be machriya, which of the two pairs of Aden is telling the truth. The uki mamona becheskes barshatia, barshatia is the marakama. And that's the muksak, and we're on motzim of the raya. You want to prove that the sale was valid and force barshatia to relinquish his possession over the field, the burden of proof is on you, ha motzim mechavel of araya. Velo amoron. However, Ravashi now clarifies that, wait a second, how do we know that this karka belongs to Barshatya and he has a muktzakas on it. Maybe when he bought the karka, he was a shota. And the original, the original Kenyan was, was invalid. Only if there are Aiden that testify this karka belonged to the father of Barshatya. And that generates a status of Chezkes Marakam on this karka. Ah, but in the case of Leslie Chazaka the Avasa, the Aiden. Do not come forward to testify that this piece of character, this piece of real estate belonged at one point to his father. But rather, we have to assume that he bought the field. Is Amrinon. We're going to raise the following logic. And that is Kshushota Zavan, or Kshushota Zavan. When he bought the field, he was a Shota. And when he sold the field, he was a Shota. And if when he bought the field, he was a Shota, that, that sale is not valid. Therefore, he cannot sell the Kaka because he doesn't own the Kaka. And therefore, if he sells the kaka, the buyer himself becomes muxuk in the kaka. He's sitting and squatting in the land. And misafik, we can't take him out of the land. So Rav Kivager asks the following question. Why did Rav Nachman need this whole story with Barshatya and Ravashi? It's a Dover Poshut. You don't need a proof at all. Because if you have a situation of trade, trade, the situation is suffix. And we know that Allah in Suffolk is Hamotzi Mechavero Olaf Araya. That's, that's elementary, that's basic.
Then he offers a possible suggestion that maybe Rav Nachman wanted to prove from Bar Shatya that in a case of trade tray, if the Balashtar was tofes, then ain't moti and But the truth is, he, he couldn't prove that from, from Bar Shatya. I mean, they had to talk about a case of, a, of Karka. There's no feast on Karka. So Rikivega answers that what Rav Nachman wanted to prove what the, is that we shouldn't say Yachloku, because the Gemara has in the Sechti Yavam Islam and Aleph a case of trade trade, and if it's a suffix or raisa, then we say Yachloku. So he proves from Barshatya that this is only a suffix to Rabbanon, and Ein Motziyah Miyad HaMuchsa. If it was a suffix to Torah, then we wouldn't say Uki Karka Becheskes Marakam Becheskes Barshatya, but rather we would say Yachloku. Om Rabbi Avo, Ein Mezini, they say, Eidim Ifneim Achish, they say, Eidim Shalom Ifneim. I want to tell you, Rabbi, I used to teach a series in what I call the Brisker Methodology. And I realize now that the Gemara of Rabbi Afo that we're about to learn is a perfect example of Rabbi Chaim's breakthrough shita of what we call Tzvei Dinim. Look at, look at Rabbi Afo. As far as Azam is concerned, which the Torah says, Vasisam lo zomam, and two Adam testify against the first pair of Adam and Imano Aisim, and therefore the first pair of Adam will either have to pay Mamon or get Malkis or get Misa. It has to be Bifneam. Why? Because you're coming to be Mechai of the Edim Zomim. Yovo Bal Ashor V'yoyed Al Shoro. But in the case of Akhasha, the second pair of Edim and Machichim, they're not testifying anything about the first pair of Edim. They're not saying that the first pair of Edim are Psulim, or they lied, they perjured themselves, they weren't there. And then, I, and then I'm asking Bezdin to punish the first pair of Edim. They're just being made on the Misa that the Maisa did not happen the way it was described by the Eden. That's called Akhasha. And that could be a Shalom of because they're not the Maldova here, the Eden. They're not being judged and being punished. So why do I say this is a perfect example of the Briska methodology? Because they're Tzvei Dinim, Tzvei Be Hazama. Hazama on the one end is Hazama Sa Edim Hazomimim, and Vasisim lo kashazom, the owners for the Edom. And on the other hand, it's also Akasha. They're denying that this Misa that they testified about happened. And as far as the Hakasha element of Hazoma, that can take place even to Obifneam. So when we say there could be Hazoma to it means the Hakasha of the Hazoma. Hazoma to Obifneam, Nehid Hazoma lo havi, but Akasha mi havi. Even though there's no Hazoma here, but within the Hazoma, there's Hakasha. You know, it's the Edom HaMazimim are saying, Imanu HaYisem. And they're being made on the Edom themselves, that the Edom are, are liars, they perjured themselves, but they're also being made them on the Misa, that the original Edom didn't see the Misa, because they were with us in another part. They could have been in New York to see the Misa when they were with us in Chicago. Omar Mar. We're going to undermine the Pesha Osar of the original Edi Ashtar when they say Imano, when they say Anusim Ayinu. And the reason for that is because there's no Pesha Osar if we could establish the veracity of this star. By, by auth- authenticating this Edim, and we don't need the Edi Ashtar to testify in their own signature. But if you look at carefully at the language of the Brisa, the Brisa says, Mishtar Shekara Olav Irur, that there was a defendant who said about the Shtar that it's counterfeit. So the Gemara is, Medayi Karalev Irur in, Lo Karalev Irur Lo. If the Shtar that you want to use for comparison, because it has those two signatures on it, was never subject to an error. That means there was never a claim against the shtar that it was Mizuyov. And Bezdin checked out the shtar, and they authenticated the, shtar, the signature of the shtar, and they gave it a handpeg. 
right? They gave it a seal. If that didn't happen, and it was low Karala era, then we don't know. Maybe this guy is such a great counterfeiter. You know, he he was able to counterfeit the original signature. Now the, the second signature. I mean, the whole thing is just one long counterfeit, one long bluff. Rav Asi is being supported now by this price because he says that you need to make a comparison. You need that the comparative star had once a taina on it that was Mizuyov, and Bezdin went out of its way to clarify the signatures and they determined that these were authentic signatures. They put, as we said before, a handpick on the star, and now we could use the star for comparison. But if on the other end, the other star is no handpick, there was never a taina of Mizuyov against that star. Then we have to be choshesh that both stars are counted. The Gemara now continues to deal with the question of kim stars mitok star acher. Amri nardoi. Is there a possibility of using a comparative star which was never handpicked? Ein mekayim es star lo bishteik subos o mishtei sados v'ushacholam baleim sholos shonim u'bishof. According to Nardoi, let's say the Malva produces a star against the Lova and the Lova claims it's counterfeit. We cannot be Mekayim the star from another star that doesn't have a handpake unless we have two staros. For example, two ksubos. The Baal writes a star ksuba to uh, solidify in front of Adam that he was mischayev to his wife, who's, who's now going to be in the sewer. And the Adam signed on the document. And now we could use that document to compare their signatures to signatures on a different star. Or shtei staros, two stars were written on the sale of two fields. And the same pair of Adam signed on both, on both staros. What's happening here in Ardoi? Now, Ardoi is saying is that they, he, he pulls out another star with the same pair of Adim. Let's say it's a Ksuba, or it could be a star Mecher on a Sada. So he has now a comparison between that star and this star. But there was no handpick on the other star. But it doesn't matter. Since the Machsik already ate three years consecutively from the Karka, if we compare the Staros and the signatures of the Staros on this piece of Karka, And the buyer ate from the payrolls for three years consecutively. And now the Balakarka comes by and he says, wait a minute, why are you squatting on my land? Who gave you permission to do so? That's enough to establish that Bezdin checked out the star. Again, it doesn't mean that Bezin actually checked out the star. There was no handpick on the star. But since the Machsik is a star claiming that he bought the field with this star also has a Cheskis Gimel Shonim, which is a clear-cut proof that it's his, then it's as if we did a handpick on the star. Because the star is going to support his claim, the claim of the... Uh, of the defendant, and the fact that we awarded him the karka means that he wasn't lying when he produced the star. The star is really solidifying and proving his claim that I ate this field for three years and therefore I have proof of purchase. Omar Av Shimi Bar Ashi Ubi Yotze Mitachas Yad Acher. When we said that you could do this comparative Staros, because he has right to compare the signatures because he has two such Staros 
that's only in a case where he himself is producing both shtaros. So what does Rav Shimi Barashi mean when he says, When could you be Mekayim, a star, by the basis of comparing it to other staros, meaning the signatures, to verify the signatures? That's only if the two staros are muhzakim bidei anoshim acher. Two different people, says Rav, Ash, Rav Shimi Barashi, are holding on to these two staros. Avol be at Atmolo. If one person is holding on to both staros, he's got plenty of time at night, you know, to figure out how to uh, sign, imitate John Hancock, and therefore we'll call change, and maybe it's a star mezuya. So the Gemara asks the following kasha: Maishna tachas yad Atmo to lo dilmis yufi ziayev. Is afilu uh, even in a case of mitachas yadacher nami dilma ozu vechazal vechuz vechaza aso v'ziyev? Maybe the balashtar went into the house of the other guy. He saw the two signatures, and now he's able to imitate them. More answers: kuli alma, kuli hai, lo matzim echamim. If a man is holding on to two shtaros. With those same signatures on it, he can take his time and he can learn how to imitate those two signatures and forge it. But if, on the other hand, they're biad acher and he has to go over to that guy's house and try to learn how to imitate the uh, signatures, his friend is going to throw him out. We now start an interesting sugya. Now, obviously, when a person testifies in a business, he has to remember the story that he's testifying. In. But what happens if he wrote it in his own ledger, his own diary? Do you keep a diary? No, I don't also keep a diary. But where, during time, certain times in my life, I used to keep a diary. You know, probably when I was in high school or something. You know. So the man looks in his diary. Oh, now I can testify. I saw it in my own handwriting. Person writes down in a diary, a ledger, and many years go by, and he can testify many years later based on looking at his ksav and what he wrote down. If he's testifying just on the basis of what he sees in the star, but he really doesn't remember all the details. Then that's called the PM Velomi Pichsama. Aethers cannot be based on what, on, on what you write down. He's got to remember it. But Rabbi Yochan Omar, Afal Pishain Zochram Yatsmo. As long as he reads the star that's written in his own handwriting and he reminds himself of the story that happened. Then he can testify based on his memory. Every memory needs a device, an encounter to trigger off that memory. And in this case, he saw his own writings and his own signature, and it triggered off a memory. But now he remembers and he can testify. He says in the footnote here, in the name of Rashi, he writes, There are many, many different details of the story, critical details. And if he doesn't remember those, he can't testify, because that's again, There are two witnesses that saw. Uh, one of them forgot the Avis. Mid Karchad Lechavri, the other one could, could remind him. You know, we're not going to be afraid that since he heard from another guy, the other aid, his co aid, hey, do you remember how we saw Ruvain barring with that? So he, he, he's going to be influenced by what he hears from the other guy. No, we're not worried about him. 
What happens if the Baldin himself reminds him? Can you testify based on the memory that you have that was stimulated by the Baldin? Maybe we should be Choshesh. That he really doesn't, un- doesn't remember the details of his Edus, but he's relying on the Baldin. I think the concept of a Baldin here is the Balashtar, which would be the Malvin in the case of Alfa, the Lokeach in the case of Mecher. So the Edim met up with Ruvain, we'll call him. Ruven, Ruven is the uh, is the Lokeach or the Malve. And Ruven says to the Adim, look, you know, do you remember that I borrowed that I lent a thousand dollars to so and so? Oh, yeah, 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 we remember. <laughs> they really don't remember. But it's kind of embarrassing. You know, nobody wants to admit that they forgot. And on this we have Machlok Shin Rav Chaviva. Even if the Baldovar who wants to be Tobel with the Shtar reminds the Edom of their Edus, okay. So according to the second opinion, Is Ramosha teaching the same group? Is there a head-on collision? Sorry. Okay, so according to Marbury Blarvashi, if the Baldin is going to remind the Adim of all the details, that's a no-go, because then we think it's going to somehow influence the Adim to testify. The Gemara says, They cannot testify based on the Baldin, who stimulated, so to speak, their, their memory. And we ask him like Mar Breder Avashi. However, let's just turn for a second to the Avchafa Midbeis. However, there's an exception to the rule. If the aid who forgot his aidus and his memory was stimulated, and this aid is a Talmud Chacham, we have a Chazok about a Talmud Chacham, that he would never do anything that's not halachically, legally, moral, and upstanding, he probably remembers it very, very well. And where do we find something similar? We find it in Tvius Ayin, in Elum Etzius, that normally you can't return an object to a cl- someone who claims that he lost it, unless he brings a, a Simonim. But in a case of a Tzumi Rabbanon, he says, I recognize the object, it's mine, and we return it to him based on his statement. We're not choshish that he may have lied. 